Hello everyone, and welcome to the Oscilloscope Lab Overview. Okay, so at this point you should have uh, downloaded and looked at the Oscilloscope Lab description of the uh, oscilloscope and uh, the, the, the laboratory uh, procedure and the data sheet and the notes concerning the uh, um, RMS voltage and alternating current waveforms. Okay, so this part of the lab is basically a description of the oscilloscope and the function generator. So this is the, the oscilloscope right here and this is the function generator, okay, generating an alternating current. So the function generator generates an alternating current, and right now I have a, a uh, voltage which varies by a sine wave. Um, so a sinusoidal voltage as a function of time is being generated, and the output comes out of this connector right here, and the input goes into the oscilloscope here. Okay, the oscilloscope has two channels uh, that you can put inputs in. You could also plug a second uh, connector here, or you could use channel two. So there are two channels uh, that you can look at inputs with. Okay, um, so let's describe how the oscilloscope works first. Okay, well, the oscilloscope is basically a CRT tube, okay? The CRT tube is in this area right here, which has an electron gun that basically shoots electrons towards the front of the oscilloscope, okay? So in the description here in your lab, there is a, uh, a picture of a CRT screen. So back here would be the electron gun which is basically a heater that heats up electrons and or heats up a metal plate and then there is a high voltage plate in front of it that uh, has a positive uh, voltage on it and the electrons are pulled off of the uh, uh, the heated area and accelerated towards the front of the scope and when the electrons hit the front of the scope it causes the screen to glow okay so here is a, uh, a, a, the, uh, if the electrons are undeflected, then they will hit the same spot on the screen for an infinite amount of time, and it just causes the screen to glow in one place, okay? Now, the screen glows for, in one place, for approximately 10 milliseconds, so so if I move this, this thing very quickly, okay, if I move this very quickly, okay, it looks like a line because the, 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 the screen is, is, is glowing for a finite amount of time, okay, which is about, about 10, 10 milliseconds, okay. So the CRT also has uh, a a intensity control and a focus. Okay, so this knob right here uh, controls the intensity. Okay, this knob controls the intensity and this knob controls the focus. The intensity increases the high voltage on the electron gun which causes more electrons to be uh, pulled off and, and and shot towards the front. Okay, so by increasing the intensity, you basically increase the brightness of the spot. Okay, so, so, and secondly, the focus, electrons all have like charge, so groups of electrons traveling down, down the, the CRT in a beam, okay, if the electrons are traveling down the CRT in a beam, they will tend to spread out from the electrical repulsion. Of, of the all that negative charge, so so there are uh, uh, a set of magnets in there that will squeeze the electron 
it's back together again, okay? So, so that is the focus. So by adjusting the focus, you can see that, that the, the, uh, the beam becomes smaller and uh, less defined here, okay? So, okay, so, so here's the focus. You can see that you can get the electrons, uh, the, the spot focused down to a very, very tight spot, okay? Okay, at this distance here, it's kind of, okay? So that is the focus, okay? And the two other features here are the deflection plates, okay? There's a set of vertical deflection plates here where the beam passes through. And by applying a voltage across these vertical deflection plates, you can uh, pull the beam up or down. It causes the beam to move up or down. So there's a position knob uh, right here. The position knob, this is the vertical position. You can move the beam up and down uh, by changing. This basically changes the voltage on those uh, vertical deflection plates. Okay, and, and it changes the electric field when the electrons are then deflected either up or down according to positive or negative electric field. Okay, and there is also a set of horizontal deflection plates. Okay, the horizontal deflection plates work the same way except they move the beam left or right. Okay, so so the uh, by applying a voltage across those plates, you set up an electric field horizontally across the beam, and I can manually adjust that one by positioning, moving the uh, uh, up the horizontal position knob. That changes the voltage on those plates, and you can see that the beam moves left or right when I change that that voltage. Okay, so so now if I inject a signal into here, okay, if I, well, first let's, uh, let's see, how, how do you get the beam to, to uh, display a waveform? Well, the way this actually works is that when you uh, turn on the, the oscilloscope, you'll see basically a line going across here. Okay, you basically see a line going across here, but that's not a line. It's actually the dot moving across the screen. Okay, so it's actually the dot going across, going back and starting over, and going across, and going back. Okay, okay. So, so uh, how does the oscilloscope do that? Well, I can slow it down and slow it down here. So the beam is now moving across the screen at a rate of about one centimeter per second, okay? So how does it actually do that? Well, the way that works is the horizontal deflection plates right here will have an internal voltage applied to it, which starts at a negative value and then ramps up slowly. And then when it gets to its peak voltage, it starts over again ramps up slowly, starts over again, ramps up slowly. So as the voltage goes to this negative value, it starts on the left side of the screen. And then as the voltage is ramping up, the dot is deflected across the screen. Okay. And then when it reaches the end, it goes back and starts over again. Okay. So as that voltage is ramping up, the dot moves slowly across the screen. And, and because Right now, it's moving at a rate of about uh, one centimeter per second. How do I know that? Because over here is a control knob that controls the width of that ramp, okay? The width of that ramp is, is controlled by this, this knob right here, okay? And right now, the time per division is set on one second. Okay, so you can see here that it takes about one second to go one centimeter. Okay, and there are 10 centimeters across the screen. I know this because these little squares on here are basically one centimeter each. 
and there are 10 of them across the screen. So it takes 10 seconds for the beam to go across. If I switch this to a, a 0.1 seconds per division, okay, now it takes a 0.1 seconds to go across one square, and therefore it takes 10 sec one second to go across the whole screen, which would be 10 squares. Okay, so there it goes. Okay, it takes about one second for the beam to go across uh, 10 of those. And if I increase this even some more, okay, let's say it takes one millisecond to go one square. Now you can't even see it go, okay, because remember the beam glows for 10 milliseconds. The beam glows for 10 milliseconds, so by the time the, the beam travels across here, that's 10 milliseconds, okay? So I have this setting on this switch at one millisecond per square, and if the beam glows for 10 milliseconds, uh, the beam is still glowing where it started and when it get, by the time it gets to the end, okay? So I can, uh, so now you can see it, you can see the beam moving slightly when I go to two milliseconds per square and even blinks even more when I go to five milliseconds per square. But when I hit one millisecond per square, uh, it's really hard to see it blinking, okay? And if you go a half a millisecond per square, you don't see it blinking at all, okay? So, so that's how the sweep works, okay? Now, if I apply a voltage, okay, if I apply a voltage uh, that is moving up and down, at the same time it's going across the screen. Okay. Okay, so right now I have a signal that is uh, going up and down. Let's slow this down a little. Okay, let's slow this down. Okay, so now I put a signal in that is moving at about one hertz. So it's going up and down once every second. Okay. So that means it goes up and down between, uh, once in, in between each square. So I have my time per division. My time per division is set on one second. So that means it takes one second for the beam to go across one square. And I have this set at one hertz. Okay, this is set the function generator is set on one hertz, okay? So therefore, this signal is going up and down once in between each square, okay? Okay, so let's, uh, let's measure, let's put another signal in and measure the, 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 the period and the frequency. So here's another signal I just put in there. Okay, and you can see that the wavelength of this signal basically fills the entire screen. So we get one complete cycle there in the, uh, on the screen. And so let's measure the width. The period of this would be the width of this waveform. So let's measure it. The time per division is one millisecond. So there are 10 squares, 10 divisions here. So that means that the width of this is 10 milliseconds. Okay, so 10 milliseconds, uh, it would give me a frequency of one divided by 10, which would be, uh, one, by, one divided by a thousand, one divided by, no, uh, 10 milliseconds divided by, that would be 1 divided by uh, 0 0.01 mil, uh, seconds. 10 milliseconds would be 1 divided by 0 0.01 seconds, which is 100 hertz. And that's exactly what I have it set on here. I have this set at 100 hertz. Okay. 
So let's see how to measure voltage, okay? Let's see how to measure voltage, okay? So if we want to measure the peak voltage is usually what we'd like to do is measure the peak voltage. So we need a zero reference. So I usually pick um, the center of the vertical scale to be zero voltage. And how can I calibrate the scope to be that? Well, there's a knob right here. That is the mode knob for channel one, okay? And if I put that on ground, that holds the input to uh, zero volts. So ground is holds this signal at zero volts. So now I can adjust the uh, vertical position to any line that I want to use for zero volts. So I usually pick the center to be zero volts, just like that. And now I'm going to go back and, and flip that switch to, to there. Okay. Um, so the... So now I want to measure the amplitude of this signal re relative to zero volts. So first, um, we're going to look at the, the uh, volts per division scale. This knob right here is the scale for the, for the uh, uh, vertical scale, okay? And it's calibrated in volts per division, so that means volts per centimeter. And right now, this one is set on 5 volts per per centimeter, five volts per division. So all I got to do to find the peak voltage here is measure the size of this signal by in squares, and it looks like it's about one and a half. Okay, it's one and a half. Okay, so one and a half times five would be seven point five volts. Okay, so one and a half squares times 5 volts per division gives me 7.5 volts peak. Okay, so um, at this point, um, at this point, uh, we have to talk about a couple of other things. Uh, and that is, how do we get the waveform stable? Okay, so let's took look at a couple of other things here. If we want to look at uh, a ch the channel, the, the cup channel coupling, okay, that's this knob right here is the channel coupling. This is used to determine um, when to start the waveform from moving. So usually you put it in auto, but you can also put it in normal, okay, and. And what, what happens is, is that when it's in auto or normal, the, the, the waveform uh, doesn't, if you don't, if, it, if you uh, put it in normal or auto, you could control uh, what part of the waveform starts the beginning of the sweep. Okay, so the oscilloscope, if, this, if the oscilloscope is in normal and there's no signal, you get no waveform, okay? Nothing shows up. If you put it in auto and remove the signal, you still get a sweep, okay? You'll still have a sweep there because then if the oscilloscope doesn't see a waveform, it basically will go back and start over each time anyway, okay? But if you put it, the switch in normal and there's no signal going in, uh, you don't see anything. It, it simply waits for a trigger, okay? And the trigger is set by, by the trigger level here, okay? So you, the, since the signal is getting its trigger from channel 1, we'll put the trigger source on channel 1 right here, okay? That's the only input that we're getting. If you could... Um, so, so what this does is, right now it's set for the trigger. The wave, it, the trigger is set for zero volts and a rising edge. Okay, so that means that if there is a rising, uh, a rising voltage here, and the level is at zero volts, that will start the sweep over once the sweep ends. Okay, so the sweep goes goes to the end. 
and then it won't trigger a signal again until um, there is there is a, a, a criteria that meets the trigger. Okay, so so let's uh, let's play with that. I'm going to raise the trigger level. So now it's triggering on a rising edge, but a higher voltage. And notice what happens when I go above the signal of. You notice that the the waveform is triggering at a higher voltage now, okay? And if I raise the volt trigger level above the signal of the waveform, we get chaos, okay? Because what's happening now is that the sweep is going to the end and just coming back and starting, but the signal it may not, may or may not be uh, at the same point again. And because it holds the signal on there for 10 milliseconds, we see these multiple waveforms here. So it's not very stable. And if I flip this switch to normal, you don't get any signal because it's not getting a trigger. Okay, the trigger is above the signal of the of the waveform. Okay, so I'm going to flip that back to auto. And now if I bring this back down, it starts to trigger stable again. Here is zero. And now I'm triggering it at a negative voltage, okay? And once I get below the, the amplitude, once I get below the amplitude of the negative voltage, okay, it goes into chaos again, okay? So that's about the maximum negative voltage that we can uh, trigger it on, okay? I like to trigger it on zero, so I start at zero each time, okay? And, okay, so you can also trigger on a negative slope by simply pulling this this button out okay so you can see here if i pull out on a negative slope the oscilloscope waits until it sees a negative going slope to trigger on okay and again you can change the value that it triggers the same way by adjusting that knob so i like to use that one okay and uh let's see what else we got here um the hold off button is a delay after the end of the scope. So the best way to demonstrate that is to slow down the sweep. Okay, so I'm slowing down the sweep now to about one, uh, let's see, about uh, one second. Okay, so it goes across the screen in one second. Okay, and if I this is a delay after the end of the sweep. So if I turn this all the way counterclockwise, it almost starts over as soon as it gets to the end. It gets to the end and it starts again. It gets to the end, starts again. It gets to the end, starts again. Okay, but if I increase the hold off, okay, if I increase the hold off by turning that knob clockwise, uh, it slows it down. So you can see here, there's a delay before it starts again. It goes to the end, delay 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 okay and if I just turn it the other way there's no delay it just starts almost immediately so that's what the hold off does it gives you a delay before the next signal comes because you might have a signal that has two uh, uh, two uneven wave waves in it and you don't want one of them you want it to trigger on on one and not the other okay so so you give it a delay okay so that's one way to do it okay let's take a look at some more controls down here okay uh, this this knob right here allows you to look at signals from channel 2 so if you wanted to plug uh, another signal into channel 2 or plug this one into channel 2 you would just uh, flip that switch to channel 2 okay now since I don't have anything on channel 2 I just get a line okay it's just a, a, a zero volt sweep going across okay now you can also look at channel 1 and channel 2 at the same time so if you flip this switch to dual now both channel one and channel two are being shown at the same time, okay? And it's being triggered by channel one, of course, okay? Now, if I want to trigger it off of channel two, we get chaos because there is no signal on channel two, okay? 
there is no signal on channel 2. Okay? So, uh, okay. All right. Okay, and then there's only two other knobs that we have to think about. Um, the first one is the variable sweep knob. Okay, that is a calibration knob. Okay, the calibration knob uh, basically allows you to offset this scale on the time per division. Okay, um, so if you want to measure absolute times and periods, then this knob needs to be completely clockwise. Okay. But there are times when you may want to calibrate your sweep, and you can see here that it adjusts it, okay? By turning the variable sweep knob, you can adjust the time uh, to some custom value that you want, okay? That may be something in between these numbers, okay? So you can, uh, you can do that. You can calibrate your sweep yourself, okay? And we have the same thing with the same thing with the variable voltage knob here. This is a calibration knob for the which allows you to uh, calibrate the volt per scale with values that you you would like to have. Okay, so so uh, you can adjust this uh, accordingly. Okay, by adjusting that, uh, you can see that. You can change the scale uh, to some custom value and calibrate it yourself. Otherwise, if you want to use the absolute voltage numbers that are on here, this should be in the uh, locked clockwise position. Okay. Uh, okay. And so that pretty much wraps up all the controls for the oscilloscope. Um, I'm going to sign off and then I'm going to talk about the function generator next.